Hello everyone, in this video we'll be making an invoice parser agent using NITN. This workflow makes it possible to retrieve all the important data from PDFs, images and all types of documents. In this video we'll be using this to retrieve all the important data from an invoice. First I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how this workflow will work. Right here we have our workflow and it will start with a Google Drive trigger. So I'm going to Google Drive and in Google Drive I have a sample invoice. And this right here is the sample invoice that we're going to use for this video and it's just a file with all types of data. So I'm going to run our workflow and retrieve all the important data from this sample invoice. Okay, the workflow has now been completed and the results I have put in a Google Sheet. So if we go to our Google Sheets, we can see that the information that I wanted to retrieve from this invoice has been retrieved. And that's things like the company name, an email, an invoice number, the date, the gross amount and the information for the payment. So that was all the information that I wanted to retrieve from this invoice. And now you know what we can do with this workflow. And before I'm going to show you how you can make this workflow yourself, I'm going to explain a bit more about how this workflow will work. So the main thing that makes this possible is to parse a PDF or image file. But what is parsing? Parsing is the retrieving of data from files such as PDFs or images and transcribing it to normal text so that you can use it in your files. To make the parsing possible, we're going to use a third party service called Llama Parse. And Llama Parse makes it possible to freely parse a lot of documents such as images, PDFs and many other types. And right here we have the pricing of Llama Parse. We get 10,000 free credits per month. And there's also a paid plan for if you want to parse more than that each month. So now I'm going to give you a quick overview of how this workflow works. And then we'll go step by step in making this workflow for yourself. We start with a Google Drive trigger, but you can also use a schedule trigger or an update trigger. So when you update a file in the folder, then the file will automatically get parsed. So you can use it in your data sheets. After the Google Drive trigger, we're going to download the file, so we get the file. Then we're going to send the file to the Llama parse. After that, we need to wait so the parsing can finish. Then we're going to check the status if the parsing was successful. If it was not successful, we're going to wait and then try again. If it was successful, then we're going to get our results. And then we're going to extract all the important information and we put it in our Google Sheets or a database. So right here for this video, I have used a Google Sheets, but you can also use a rag with a vector database and easily talk to all the information that you have parsed. I have also made a video on how you can make a rag database for yourself. I will leave that down below so you can watch it if you're interested. Okay, so now we know how this workflow will work. Now I'm gonna show you how you can make this workflow for yourself. We are going to start with the Google Drive trigger. And first you're gonna connect your Google Drive account. If you don't have a Google Drive account yet, you're gonna click here and open the docs of the N8N. And if you follow this page, you can easily connect your Google Drive with your N8N. After you've done that, we go back to N8N and the poll time here is every minute. So we're gonna check every minute. And the trigger is when a specific folder gets changed. And in this case, that is the expense folder. And we are gonna watch for file created. So right here, if we put a file in our Google Drive and in the folder expenses, then it will check every minute if there has been an update. If there is an update, then the file will automatically get parsed. Next, we're gonna download the file from our Google Drive. So it's just the same Google Drive account and the resource is a file and the operation is a download. And here we have our ID, and this is the ID of the file from the Google Drive trigger. In the output, you can easily see if the download has been successful. And right here, I can click on view, and then we see the invoice that we're gonna use to test our workflow, and it was successful. Next, we have our first HTTP request, and now we're gonna send the file that we have just downloaded. So now we are in the HTTP request, before we can start configuring this node, we first need to get our header off and connect with the Llama Cloud. So if you don't have a header off of Llama Cloud already, you need to click here on create new credential. And then you will get this. The name will be authorization and here in the value you put your secret key. So after you've created a Llama Cloud account, you will be on the homepage. If you look left, you will see that there's a tab called API keys. You will click on that and then generate a new API key. 
So after you've created your API key, you will go back to NetN and put it in the value tab. So before you put your API key in the value tab, you first need to do a very important thing because you need to type the word bearer and a space bar and then your API key. So right now I'm here in the docs of the Llama cloud. And as you can see right here in authorization, we first need to put the word bearer and then a space and then your API key. And that's very important because otherwise you won't be able to connect to the Llama cloud. So after that, we're now ready to start configuring our HTTP node. So the method is a post and then the URL is the HTTP API cloud Llama indexed slash API slash parsing slash upload. This means that we are going to upload our file to the Llama cloud. Then the authentication is a generic credential type. Generic auth is a header auth and then the header auth is our Llama cloud account. And we're going to send headers. The name is accept. The value is application slash JSON. And then the name is content type, value, multi-part form data. And we're also going to send a body. And then the body content type is from data. And the body parameters is edit and binary file. And the name file. And then the input data is data. So if you find it useful, you can also use this docs of the Llama cloud itself. And then right here, this is what we have just done. We're going to upload a file and start parsing. So if you've put in all the data correctly, you will now be able to send your file to the Llama cloud. And then right here, we get a output. Okay, next we need a wait node and the wait node is 30 seconds. This is very important because we need to give the Llama cloud some time to actually parse our file that we have just sent. And after that, we're gonna make another HTTP node. The method is a get and the URL is API cloud.llama index slash API parsing job and then our json.id and this id is the id of the file that we have just sent for parsing and this will check if our parsing job was done correctly so the authentication is generic credential type and then generic auth type is header auth and the header auth itself is the llama cloud account we have just made we're also going to send headers and right here in the header parameters we have name and application slash json and then we get the output with the status success or fail next we will have a if node and the if node will check if our parsing job was done successful or if it failed if it was successful then we'll go ahead and then we we'll go further in our workflow if it was not successful then we'll wait again and then we will check again if it now is successful because sometimes it can take a while to parse your file this is our if node and here we have our status if you look at the schema that's just right here and then if it equal to success then we'll go through with our workflow now that we know that our parsing was successful we're going to retrieve our information and that's what we're going to do in this http request so this method is a get because we want to get our information. And then the URL is API cloud.llama index slash API slash parsing slash job. And then our ID of the file that we have sent. And then the result slash markdown. Then the authentication is a generic credential type, a header of, and then the Llama cloud account. And we are also going to send headers. And the name is accept. And then the value is application slash JSON. And that's all we're going to do for this HTTP request. And then the output will be this. You can already see some prices, but it's not really structured data that we can easily read and use for ourselves. And that's what we're gonna do in the next node, and that is the information extractor. So in the information extractor, we're gonna retrieve all the data that we actually want to store. In a PDF invoice file, there's a lot of information that you really don't want to store. So you only want to store the most important information like email addresses, names, dates, and amounts and billing uh, details. So the information extractor is acting kind of like a filter. And this is how we're going to configure it. So the JSON markdown. So this is our input from the HTTP request. And then the schema is this right here. And this is our filter of the data that we actually want to retrieve. This is the schema that I have used. So right here, I have the name, address, phone, email, website, and a lot more of information that we can retrieve from our invoice. So to create this schema for yourself, we are going to do the following. So you are going back to your HTTP request, getting your markdown, and you are going to copy the entire markdown right here. Then you are going to chat GPT and then copy the entire markdown 
Next, you're going to write this. Create a JSON schema to retrieve all the important information. And you're just going to send that. So ChatGPT is now going to write your entire info schema that you can use to retrieve all the important information from your invoices. And just copy this and then import that into your input schema right here. After the input schema, we have a system prompt right here. You are an expert extraction algorithm. Only extract relevant information from the text. If you do not know the value of an attribute as to extract, you may omit the attribute's value. The text can contain one or many listing properties. Make sure you extract all of them. So this prompt just says that it needs to retrieve all the important information and that if the information is not there, then you leave the value empty. And right here, our output is all this structured information that we have retrieved from our PDF file. And finally, we're going to put this information in our database or in this case, a Google Sheets. In the Google Sheets node, we first need to connect with our Google credential. If you don't have your Google credential yet, you can click here on create new credential and connect with your Google. The resource is Sheets within Document. The operation is append a row because we want to add our information that we have gathered. Then the document is, in this case, the invoice expense parser and then the first sheet of the document. And right here, we are going to give all the information that we want to send to our Google Sheet. So in this case, we are going to send the company name, an email, customer name, the invoice number, the date, the gross amount, and the billing details. And right here in the information extraction node, you can find all this information. You can just drag it all in the values to send. If you want to send different values than I have right here, you're just going back to the Google Sheets and add a column with the information that you want to store, and then it will be available in NetN for you to use. So after we've done that, we will see right here that the information has been sent. And that is all I have for you today. This workflow will be free for you to download in the description below. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.